All right, the sum of three consecutive integers is negative 1,353. Find the numbers. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the smallest of the three numbers is x. Okay, why am I using x? It's because uh, I want to be able to write an equation from this as an equation in the most efficient method. I don't know. Uh, you just have to decide which one you like the best, and then you can do that. So I'm, I'm, I may be using the, the method that's kind of the longest method, but... Uh, I do hope it helps. Okay, so let me say x is the smallest number. Now, consecutive. Let's look at consecutive here. Consecutive indicates that the number's all one right after another. Okay, so one, two, and three are all consecutive numbers. Now, we have to be careful because if we end up with negative values, remember that if you go from least to, be, uh, to bigger, that you're going to say that the more negative the number is, the less it is. So if I wanted two consecutive negative numbers, it'd be like... Uh, negative 5 and then negative 4. That's smallest to biggest, okay? So be careful when we get to the end here to make sure that you're doing that, okay? So I'm going to start with the smallest number. And, well, we already know that the smallest number is uh, just x. So there's x right there. Now, if I wanted to identify the next number, which would be the middle number in this sequence, so I'm going to put that in, uh, middle number. Now, I want to write that as an expression that's related to the smallest number. So I take the smallest number. If I added 1 to that, that would give me the next integer right there. See that? And, and this is how I'm able to write the equation for it because now that I have the middle number and I want the biggest number, because we're only looking at these three, once again, in relation to uh, relationship to x, it would be 2 more than x, right? Because 1 more is the middle number. So if you take it in relationship to the smallest number, it's 2 away from that. So it did say up here that we're going to take the sum of these. So if I took the sum of them, it would equal this negative 1,353. And this becomes an equation that I can solve for by combining all of my like terms. So for example, I got uh, 1x here. <coughs> Excuse me, and then another 1x, and then another 1x. If I combine these, that'd give me a total of 3x's. And then I can combine the 1 and 2 there, which would combine to be a positive 3. Of course, this all equals uh, negative 1,353. So this is just an equation that now I need to solve, which I can do. First thing I will do is to... Um, Isolate my x's. So I don't want that plus 3 there. i got to subtract it. But if I do it to one side, i got to do it to the other side. Okay, so that's going to zero out. I'll drop my 3x, which now equals negative 1,353 minus 3. I'd make that plus negative 3 myself uh, just while we're doing this by hand. So I know my answer is negative. And then I would add the 2, which would give me 1,356. Okay, but then I don't want 3x's. I want one of them. So to make that coefficient of 1, I would divide both sides by the coefficient of 3. So now x equals, and we can do the long division up here. Uh, I know my answer is going to be negative, for sure, because there's only one negative in that uh, fraction right there. But now I need to set this up with uh, just being positive, 1,356, and dividing by 3. So let's go ahead and put that in. So 3 will go into 3, it won't go into 1, but 13 will go into 4 times, 4 times 3 is 12, subtract, and that'd be 1, drop the 5 to make it 15, 3 goes into 15, 5 times, 5 times 3 is 15, it zeroes out, so drop the 6 there, 3 goes into 6, 2 times. So I did that kind of fast, hope that's okay, because now it tells us that x, which is the smallest number, is negative 452. Now that's the smallest number, right? Be careful because in listing the 3, uh, this happens often enough where uh, I'm, I'm going to specify this, but some students then write negative 452, and so the next one would be negative 453, and then the next one, just, I mean, without any extra thought, the next one would be negative 454. Now, you should be, you should be uh, checking these answers to make sure that they are correct, and we, I mean, we've done negative 452. That should be correct, but the other two... Uh, we took the smallest number, and then we actually created smaller numbers. Remember that we wanted the next biggest numbers in the order that we did them. Of course, you could have started with the middle number or the biggest one, but I started the middle one. 
Uh, but this won't do, and you could check. If you added these three together, would you get the original value of negative 1,353 as their sum? No, you would not. And so, yeah, we these values are not usable, okay? So, remember, I, I have negative 452. If I wanted to go one up from that, then I would add one to it, which would be negative 451. See that? And again, that's where we have to be careful with those negatives. So the next number up would be negative 450. Last thing I would recommend doing is just adding these together. And, and I'm just going to stack these, taking a little bit of a shortcut to check. But uh, I know my answer would be negative, so I'm just going to take 452, 451, and 450. I'm just going to add these together and see what I get. Uh, and, of course, I know my answer is going to be negative. But it should be the original answer we got, the sum, which was negative 1,353. So in adding these together... In the ones place value, you got 2 plus 1 plus 0, which is 3. In the tens place value, you got 5 plus 5, which is 10, plus another 5 is 15, carry the 1. In the hundreds place value, you got 1 plus 4 is 5, plus another 4 is 9, plus another 4 is 13. So 1353, that was the value we originally saw it should be. And, uh, well, that means that we have arrived at our answer. And that's as far as we need to go. But... Before we finish, I'm going to show you a different method, just in case you really hated that one, which is pretty common. All right, so I'm going to put this down here. We could call it method two. It doesn't really matter what you call it. It's just by using the average. So here's what I see is that the sum is negative 1,353, but it's the, sum of, it's the sum of all three numbers, which means that if I took that negative 1,353 sum, and divided it by the three consecutive integers, all three of them, it would give me the middle number here, okay? So I know that this division will give me a negative answer. But from there, I need to take my 1,353 and actually divide it by three. Okay, and again, this will be the middle number because it's the average, and the average is in the middle of the values. I just know that it's going to be negative already, so in this... Long division, 3 goes into 13, 4 times, 4 times 3 is 12. Subtract that out. 3 minus 2 is 1, drop the 5 is 15. 3 goes into 15 5 times. 5 times 3 is 15. That zeroes out, drop the 3. 3 goes into 3 1 time. So I'm not going to show all the work on that, but I do get a final answer of negative 451, which as we can see from the original problem is the middle number up here. So that means 1 to the left would have been this negative 452, and then one to the right would have been negative 450. So that's kind of a quick way to do it. I don't know that quicker means better or even easier, uh, because that may not have made a lot of sense to some of you, but hopefully the equation way does, because um, if, even if we haven't seen that on the homework, um, we should be able to set these up just by choosing the number that we're writing all the other numbers in relationship to that. Also, keep in mind that if this was consecutive odd or even numbers, that uh, from one number to the next, they're two away, right? So you, you, if you took the smallest one, the next odd or even would be two away. So it'd be x plus two, and then even further, it'd be four more away. See that? So you have to be careful and read that. You may have to read that two or three times, really think about what it's saying and to understand it. But one of these two methods will work. Now, what I... A rectangular field is 11 times as long as it is wide. If the perimeter of the field is 4,800 uh, 4, feet, write an equation and determine the dimensions of the field. So that's probably two, pro two parts to this problem. And that means that there will probably be two boxes that you need to fill in on this assignment, okay? But what we do know, just starting out, is that we got a field, something like this. And if we looked at, I don't know, length here and width here, not that it matters which is which, but up here it said that the length is 11 times as the width, as long as it is wide. So that means that the length is not only the width, but 11 of those. So that's 11 times the width. Okay, why do we need that? It's because this length up here is also 11 of the width, and the width on the right is the same as that width. If we combined all those together, it would give us the perimeter, which shows as 4,800 feet. Okay, we can put that in feet, which means that if I took... My first length, 11 width, and then my other width there, and then the other length, 11 of the widths. 
and then the width. If I were to add these all together, then it would give me the perimeter, which we already know is 4,800 feet. Okay, but this becomes an equation that we can solve because it wouldn't be nice to show length here and length there as L's because then we have, would have two variables, which we don't want. We don't know how to solve those yet. But I would see here that I got one W there and one W there. 11 and 1, that'd be uh, 12 of those W's. And then another 11 of those W's would be 23 of the W's. And then another 1 would make that 24 of the widths. Of course, this all still equals 4,800 feet, okay? So if you had 24 of the widths, it'd be 4,800 feet. I don't want 24 of those widths, I just want 1, so I'm going to divide both sides by 24 here. And I'm going to use a little bit of a trick on this just to shorten it up just a little bit. So the width here, I'm going to take those two zeros and tack that onto the answer, which means all I have left is uh, 48 divided by 24. I'm going to skip a couple steps and just show that's two. So that's a width of 200 feet. Can I just put feet with that little apostrophe mark, uh, which is appropriate uh, for those of you that have worked at least even a little bit in construction. Okay, so... Uh, that's the width, but we want the dimensions of the whole field. Um, and yeah, by, by the way, this, I suppose, would be the equation, whether they ask for it or not. But I still need the length. So the length is 11 of those widths, and we know the width now is 200. Okay, so if I want the length, I do 11 times 2, which is 22, and then tack on those two zeros to the answer. That means the length is 2,200 feet. Let's go ahead and check just to make sure that we've done this right, okay? So up here at the top, remember that the length, now we know the length anywhere we think we do, is 2,200 feet. The width is just 200 feet. So if I replace that, 11 widths, that'd be 2,200. And then this width also 200. Now you can stack and add these together, uh, but I'm just checking to make sure that the answer is correct. And sure enough, if you added all those together, you would get an answer of 4,800. So when the width was 200 and when the length is 2,200, it does give us that exact perimeter with the other conditional statement of the length being 11 of the widths, which is true. 2,200 is 11 of those widths. And then when we added them, we got that exact perimeter. So that checks off. And now we know and can feel comfortable boxing in our answers here. Uh, yeah, and I think, I think I labeled those, right? Yep. 2,200 feet. Boom. On this one, a wire 34 feet long is cut into two pieces. The longer piece is 8 feet longer than the short piece. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my long piece, which is 34 feet right here. So that's 34 feet. Now, it's been cut into two pieces. One's shorter. So I'm going to say red is my short piece label it there I mean I'm drawing it shorter so hopefully that's kind of obvious but then if I combine it with the long piece here and I have purposely made that longer is it proportional um, no but it doesn't really matter okay so the whole thing is 34 feet long but here's what we know is that the long piece here is eight piece eight feet longer than the short piece okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the short piece, I'm just going to say is X because I don't know what it is. So the long piece is the short piece, but another 8 feet added on to that. Now, if I took the short piece and the long piece and added them together, what would I get? Well, you'd get the length of the original wire, which was uh, 34 feet long. So this becomes the equation that I ne now need to solve. Combining my like terms with the X's, 1X and another X would be 2X's plus 8 there now equals the 34. Okay, and this equation, not too bad to solve. Two steps, zero out the plus eight to isolate your x's, so I'm going to subtract eight, but if I do it to one side, I got to do it the other side. That zeroes out the eights, drop your 2x, which now equals 34 minus eight. I can borrow from the three there. 14 minus eight is six, drop the two is 26. And then, finally, to figure out the value of x, the short piece, I'm going to divide by the coefficient of 2. 26 divided by 2. I'll skip the long division there, but that makes that uh, th uh, 13 feet right there. That's the short piece, right? Because up here, I had already defined the short piece as the x. 
But if I wanted the long piece, then I would take x plus 8, but now we know that x is uh, 13. So that's a 13 there now. Again, this is for the long piece. 13 plus 8 is going to be 21 feet, okay? Now, the last thing I would do just to check on this is 13 plus 21. Does it equal 34? It does. And now I know for sure that the long piece is 21 feet and the short piece is 13 feet. Uh, so it satisfies both conditions. When I added the two, it was 34 feet long, and the longer piece is 8 feet longer, just in checking my work to make sure that everything checks off in the end. So now I know that these two are correct, and I feel comfortable that they're correct. 17 subtracted from 9 times the number is negative 125. What is the number? Oh, okay. So we just got to write the equation and solve. So I, I would kind of assume that either on the quiz or the review or homework, and this would be two different boxes that we need to fill in. No problem, okay? It's just, this this has that one statement on there that's an indirect, indirect statement. It's just changing the two values. So it's 17 subtracted from something. Now, subtract, of course, is subtraction. But it's a 17. Is, is it in the first position or second? It's it's second. You've got you to subtract 17 from something. Well, what is it that we're subtracting it from? Nine times the number. Well, that'd be 9. I'm going to use X on this one. Uh, and it'll specify what letter it wants used on there. Yeah, that's very good. So, yeah, and then this this is. So that's equals right there. Uh, negative 125. Okay. So now this, like I said before, this is probably a box that you would need to fill in on the, on the quiz assignment or review. But... I'm going to skip that for now, and I need to solve it for x, okay? So, let's see, let's go and solve this. Principles of equality, I just want to isolate that 9x, so I got to zero out that minus 17. And so, what would I do to zero it out? Well, you'd have to add 17 right there, see that? It's just if you do it to one side, remember to do it to the other side here as well, so I'm adding 17 there. Still drop my 9x. The 17s, this is going to zero out. Negative 17 plus 17 is zero. Now I got negative 125 plus 17. Uh, for me, I see that the 125 is bigger. It's negative. And so I know that my answer here will be negative. Then I just take the two numbers, the big one, 125, and subtract the small one, 17. I have to borrow for the 5. 15 minus 7 is 8. 1 minus 1 is 0. Drop the 1, 1 away. There we go. And now I just want the coefficient of x to be 1. So I will divide both sides by the coefficient, which is 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1, 1x, one which now equals, by dividing 9 on the other side, negative 1 away divided by 9. Again, that's part of the multiplication table. Hopefully we have memorized. that just be negative 12. I'll make the, the coefficient of x a phantom 1. And while this is, this is pretty good right here, and again, that's kind of two answers built into the problem. The last thing I would want to do on this is just check. Okay, so I'm going to take 9x minus 17 and just should equal negative 125 because remember, a solution to an equation needs to make it true. So if I'm saying x is the solution here, it needs to actually substitute or replace x with that value, negative 12. And it should give us true statements. So let's go and check here. Yeah, and, and you'll find, which I, I think I pointed out before, that as you do this problem, you'll see some of these answers kind of reemerge, like negative 108, and then, well, I guess negative 125. There's only two steps on this one. So first thing I do on this one, of course, nothing to do with the negative 125 on the right, but 9 times negative 12 is, see that, negative 108, and then minus 17. This would equal negative 125. I should have put a question mark over the equal sign because we are checking here. And then negative 108 minus 17. I'm going to skip some of the heavy lifting here. But that would be negative 125. So uh, negative 125 does equal negative, negative 125. That is a true statement. And so now I would know that x does actually equal negative 12. I, I like when we don't have to set these up. It's just set up for us. We just need to solve it now. And on this one, we do have some um, distribution to take care of first with the 6, right? Remember, 
we're not seeing that operation between the six and the parentheses. And if we don't see the operation, we should know that it's automatically multiplication. Of course, we use some distributed rainbows on this one. But uh, multiplying, I'll use the red rainbow there first, six groups of 6x. That would give us how many x's? 6 times 6 is 36. That'd be six, 36 of those x's. And then over here, I would have 6 times 9, which would be 6 times 9 is uh, 54. All right, now we do have addition between these, or that the 54 is positive. That works, too. And then we'll just drop the 90. So this sets up the equation for us now. Now we've done some distribution. And just like we've seen already in the review, I just want to isolate that the x's. So I don't want that plus 54 there. I'm going to have to zero that out by subtracting 54. But we can't just do this randomly and just say, hey, look at what I did. Just make sure that if you do it to one side, it's a full principle of equality and that you do it to the other side here. So subtract 54. So let's see, that's going to be zero. That's good. But drop the 36 x's is going to equal 90 minus 54. Let's see, zero. I'd make that 10 minus 4. So borrow from the 9. 10 minus 4 is 6. 8 minus 5 is 3. 36 x equals 36. Some of you don't really need this extra step now because I do want the coefficient of x to be 1. So I, I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient 36. Okay, because we do want the phantom 1 x. And 36 divided by 36 is 1. Again, I cross that out with a 1, not just randomly crossing it out. Okay, And then, yeah, on the right side as well, 36 divided by 36 is 1 also. I'm not finished with this problem. The last thing I need to do is to actually check. Let's go back to the original equation. 6, 6x six plus 9. Let's see if I can fit it. Equals 90 like this, right? Now, there at the bottom, I'm saying that x should equal 1, right? So, I'm going to replace x with 1. Let me see. It, oh, man, if I can do this better. That's a little better. And then I'm going to put a question mark over the equal sign. And, yes, I've done better question marks, too, but... Here we go. All right, so order of operations on that. Of course, the 90 is just 90, but 6 times 1 in the parentheses. 6 times 1 is 6. I'm just focusing on the inside of the parentheses. Of course, calculator would do this for us, but uh, now I will do 6 plus 9, which is 15. So now rewriting the full equation, 6 times 15 equals 90, does it? Well, let's find out. Uh, you know what? I'll use a different color. 6 times 15, let's see... Uh, down here, 6 times 15, that's a 6 by the way, 6 times 5 is 30, carry the 3, 6 times 1 is 6, but add 3, makes that 9, 90. 90, last time I checked, does actually equal 90, so again, this checks off for us, then I know that x equals 1 is the actual solution for this equation. So here's another equation that we can solve, no problem. Let's make that a little bigger for us. Now, we'd look first to combine any like terms that we have, but I don't see any on this one, at least on either side of the equal sign. So, uh, where we may not have seen this before, at least I don't remember it, where, see how we got x's on both the left side and the right side of the equal sign? What I really want to do is isolate my x's, okay? So I'm, I'm going to do this in two steps, although it is possible to do it in one step, okay? It's two steps that you can do in one step. So what I want to do is I, I like to see my x's on the left, left side of the equal sign. And then I like to see my numbers on the right side, okay? So for me, I would say that, see this 19 right here? It's with this 14x. I, I don't want it there. I don't want it there. And I can just not want it there, actually. Remember that a lot of the math here that we do is just kind of forcing things to be what we want them to be. I don't want the 19 there, so I can force it to do what I want it to do. I'm going to zero it out so I don't have to look at that garbage anymore. So I'm going to subtract 19. Okay, just remember if I do it to one side, I, I need to do the other side. there. So that's minus 19 over there on the right. 19 minus 19 is zero. I didn't do anything to the 14x other than, it, than to isolate it. So this would equal, drop your 11x as well. Then you got negative 5 minus 19. I'll skip some of the long math on that one, but that didn't give us negative 24, just for the sake of time, okay? Now, with that 11x, see how this 11x is on the number side of things? That's garbage. We don't really want that either, so I'm going to zero it out, too. So, zeroing it out, I'll subtract 11x there, but if I do it to one side, I must do it to the other side as well. 
What does that do? Well, 14x's minus 11x's, that'd be 3x's. This will equal 11x minus 11x, that is 0, and then I'm going to drop this. Remember that each term will take the operation immediately to its left as negative, in this case negative. So that's negative 24. Now, finally, dividing both sides by the coefficient, which is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, phantom 1x. Now equals negative 24 divided by 3 is negative 8. Okay, 1 negative, that makes that answer negative right there. Okay. All right, now we're getting into more equations that I like. I like these type because it's um, just a couple, like a two-stepper on this one, right? So I'd say the 52, I don't want it there. That negative m, I just want it to stay negative m, but to be by itself isolated. So I need to zero out that 52. It's positive. So I'm going to subtract 52. Just if I do it to one side, I need to do the other side there, okay? So 52 minus 52 is zero. I'm going to drop this. Remember, that's negative m. You could even show the phantom one there if you'd like. But this is going to equal 81 minus 52. Let's see, 1 minus 2. I need to make that 11. So borrow from the 8, make it 7. 11 minus 2 is 9. 7 minus 5 is 2. 29. Last thing I need is a coefficient of m that's a positive 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient itself. Negative 1. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. Phantom 1m equals now negative 29. Okay? Uh, so I'd say this is 52 minus negative 29. That's going to end up being 52 plus 29. And uh, if you do that, you're going to get 81 right there. So it does check off. Here's another two-stepper for us. Let's go and make that a little bigger. Solving for x. I need to isolate my 16x's right there, so I don't want the plus 21. So I'm going to subtract 21 there to zero that out. So just dropping the 16x. 21 minus 21, that does exactly what I wanted it to do, which is to zero out. This equals 85 minus 21. 5 minus 1 is 4. 8 minus 2 is 6. And then we're going to divide both sides by the coefficient of x, 16. So two steps on this one. That gives us phantom 1x. x equals, um, uh, I'm going to skip the long division on this one just for the sake of time, but x is 4 on this one. So if you use the long division on that, it's 4. And then just like we said before, you, in checking on this, 16 times 4 is 64. 64 plus 21. 4 plus 1 is 5. 6 plus 2 is 8. Right there. So 85. That checks off. X equals 4. All right, this one, I think this one looks worse than it actually is. And uh, we don't, we do want to isolate the X's, but there's not really a, a, a giant need for that because on the left side of the equal sign, we just have like terms of x's, okay? So that's uh, 7x's minus 16x's, you know, without showing the extensive math there for the sake of time. That would give us negative 9x, which now equals negative 54. And then finally to solve, I want a coefficient of x, that's just phantom 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by the actual coefficient, which is negative 9 for now. Divided by itself is 1, 1x, one phantom 1x equals negative 54 divided by negative 9. Two negatives makes this answer a positive. 54 divided by 9 is 6. And again, without, without fully checking this, um, uh, if we replace x with 6 here, we should get negative 54. Oh, here we go. This one, this one uh, I tend to see more mistakes on a problem like this one than I, I wish I did. And we just need to remember that it's a negative 1z right there. But we remember also that we don't want the coefficient of whatever the variable is to be negative, even if it's 1, negative 1. It, we just need it to be positive 1, right? So how do we make a negative 1 positive? Divide it by itself. But if we do it on one side, you got to do it on the other side as well. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is phantom 1 there. So phantom 1z equals, of course, anything divided by 1 is itself. 2, 12, just apply the negative. So uh, just in checking this one, negative of negative 212, the, the negative and negative there is going to make that a positive 212, which it does in the answer. And so it looks like z equals negative 212. All right, even with problems like these ones, this is one step right here because I only see one operation. t divided by negative 17. Remember, we don't want divide by negative 17. We want multiply by 1. 
How do I make it divide by negative 17 to 1? Just uh, multiply it by itself, negative 17, there, okay? But if you do it to one side, you must do it to the other side there. So that's going to, again, I cross that out. It's not that I cross them out because they canceled or go away. It's just that that's how I would show a phantom 1 that's just slanted. So that's a phantom 1t. Of course, I don't really need to show the 1 there, hopefully. But now I got 3 times negative 17. Let's see. It's only one negative, so the answer is negative, but 17 times 3. 7 times 3 is 21. Carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, but add the 2. Makes that 5. So negative 51. Okay, so negative 51 divided by negative 17 there. Um, yeah, that would be 3 right there. Uh, again, I'm not going to show the work just for the sake of time. So solve this one. Negative 6x equals 78. So, yep, I'm going to make that coefficient of x1 by dividing both sides by the coefficient negative 6. So negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1. Now x equals, let's see, negative 78 divided by 6. We can show the long division on this one. Of course, I know my answer is negative here. But 6 will go into 7 once. 1 times 6 is 6. Track 7 minus 6 is 1. Drop the 8, that's 3. 6 goes into 18 3 times. So remainder of 0, that's good. But our final answer there, then, would be negative. 13, so negative 6 times negative 13 isn't going to be that positive 78. All right, even better, at least on uh, for me, I would think, is uh, the coefficient of x is already positive 1, so I just don't want that minus 62. So, yeah, add 62 here. Plus 62. That's going to zero that out. Drop my x, which now equals... Um, 9 plus 2 is 11, carry the 1, 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 6 is 161. So 161 minus 62, if you were to check that, you'd get 99. That will check off. So there we go. Simplify the expression, no problem. There is some, uh, some distribution, which we've seen already. So I'm going to use some distributive rainbows. i got to distribute the negative 9 into this set of parentheses. And then over here, I got the 4, I got to distribute into this set of parentheses. We'll do them separate. So starting with the negative 9, first that'd be negative 9 groups of negative 8 Bs. So how many Bs is that? Negative 9 times negative 8 is positive 72. Then I also have negative 9 times, I show this as negative 3, because negative 9 times negative 3 is positive 27. See that? So that we show that as plus 27. And then... In the purple there, four, four groups of 12 Bs. That's a B, by the way, not a 6. Four groups of 12 would be 48 of those Bs. They're positive, so I'll that, show that as plus. And then I also have four groups of negative 6 right there. So that would be negative 24. All right? So that simplifies it. I wouldn't necessarily say that that simplifies it, but it at least allows us to simplify it directly by combining like terms. So I'm going to start with the Bs. i got 72 Bs here, 48 Bs there. When I combine those, how many Bs is that? Well, let's find out. 72 plus 48. 2 plus 8 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 7 is 8 plus 4 is 12. So that's 120 of those Bs. And then of the constants, i got 27 and minus 24. So 27 minus 24. 7 minus 4 is 3. 2 minus 2 is 0. It's just a positive 3 right there. So it's plus 3, boom, that's as far as we need to go. Do remember as well that uh, I believe that it doesn't matter if you put it in this order with 3 first plus 120 of the Bs. That, would, that should work as well. More simplification, and on this one, it's important to remember that the coefficient of the x there on the right is a phantom negative 1 on that, okay? So I do have the 9x and the negative 1x, which I do need to combine. So that would just be 9 minus 1, which is 8. So that's 8 of the x's. The negative 17 there, which it is negative. Remember, it's taking the operation to its left as its sign. Uh, nothing to combine with it, so it just ends up being negative 17. Okay? So once again, if you wanted to show that as negative 17 plus 8x, that should work. If it wants it in a specific order, it will specify that on the assignment. All right, simplify with distribution, which we've seen before. Of course, the A and B are not like terms to combine in the parentheses, so I would distribute the 28 to the A first. 28 groups of 1As, that'd be 28As. 
and then 28 groups of a B would give us 28 Bs. Positive, by the way, positive 28 Bs. So that's 28A plus 28B. I, I believe that on the assignment it would want this one in order, but I also kind of assume that it wouldn't, but it should specify. Using the formula, distance equals rate times time, find the distance covered by an airplane flying at 861 miles per hour for 300, uh, sorry, three hours right there. Well, we know that D for distance equals the rate, R for rate times the time like this. And what do we have from this? Well, right here, the 861 is in miles per hour. That is a rate. How do we know that's a rate? It's because it has two different quantities in it, miles and hours. So that's 861 miles per hour, which seems kind of fast, but for three hours right there. So the time, that, that of course, three hours is in time, not distance. And we are solving for distance here, right? Find the distance. I use a different color. Find the distance, okay? So D for distance. So the D, D for distance, what do we get? Uh, let's go ahead and multiply these out. 800, I'll have to stack them. 861 times 3. I, I kind of feel like you're licking your chops like, man, I wish we could use a calculator. We will. We will in the next module. 1 times 3 is 3. I use the appropriate color. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. 3 times 8 is 24, but add the 1 makes that 25. So 2,583, of course this one, uh, the, the distance shown in the rate was in miles, so this one also in miles, 2,583 miles. All right, evaluating expressions like this one, so all I'm doing is replacing the y and z here with the values they've given us. I, I, I'm going to rewrite the expression, though. so 3y to the power of 4 plus 4z to the power of 3. All right, so we'll need a little bit of review on this with the exponents. But here's what it tells us is that y is negative 2. So where I see the y there, I'm going to replace that with negative 2. I'm also going to put that in parentheses so we know that its full value is negative 2. And then it says z is 3, so the z, that's just positive 3. I'm still going to show it in parentheses, though. It's positive 3 right here. Okay, now we have an order of operations problem to simplify uh, so I'm going to start with the exponents first. And so first off, I'd have negative 2 times itself four times. Let's see if I can use some technology to make this pretty. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four negative 2 is multiplied together. Um, hmm. I guess I can move that over. Can I move that over? Yeah, something like that. Okay. So what do I get from this? That's four negatives being multiplied. So that's a positive answer. And then 2 times 2 here is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, so I get 16 from the negative 2 to the power of 4. Of course, we're still going to need to multiply that by 3. Then I will add this to 4. Let's see what we get from the other one. 3 times 3 times 3. I don't need that in parentheses because they're positive. 3 times 3 is 9. Times that 3 is 27. All right, so 4 times 27. There. All right. Now, I have taken care of, there was no parentheses, but exponents there was, and so now I'm on multiplication and division from left to right. Multiplication, 3 times 16, let's see, 16 times 3, 3 times 6 is 18, carry the 1, 3 times 1 is 3, but add 1 is 4, so that's 48 there. And then here on the right, 4 times 27, 4 times 7 is 28, carry the 2, 4 times 2 is 8, but add the 2 makes that 10. So 108 there. Still adding these. And so finally, with a little bit more space, we just need to add these two values. 48 plus 108. And this will be my final simplified answer here. 8 plus 8 is 16. Carry the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 0. Is, well, still 5. Drop the 1. So these two added together equal positive 156. And, and you may not have expected that, especially with the negative 2 being y, but yeah, that, that'll check off. Of course, like I've said already, is uh, in the future, starting in Module 3, we'll be putting these into calculators, but again, we shouldn't be expecting to do this on a calculator yet. So evaluate this one. A is 27, B is negative 39, no problem. A plus B 
And right here, yep, it said A is 27, so I replace A. My lowercase A's look like 9's, I know, but it's replaced with 27. And B is negative 39 there, so replace B with negative 39. I'll put it in parentheses just, just to clarify that it is negative, not, or not plus minus, some, some word like that. But when I combine these, I know that 39 is bigger, it's negative, so my answer is negative. And I just take the two values and, and uh, well, subtract them. Big one, 39. Minus a small one, 27. 9 minus 7 is 2. 3 minus 1, 3 minus 2 is 1. So we end up with negative 12 here. Koji's score is 14 more than 4 times Amanda's score. Write an algebraic expression for Koji's score. So we want an expression on this one, not an equation. So Koji's score in relation to Amanda's score, right? So I'm going to use A for Amanda. Again, on the assignment, it will specify if it wants you, what letter it wants you to use. But I'm going to use A because it didn't specify. It's 14 more than 4 times Amanda's score. So I, I take 4 times Amanda's score for me. And whether you put the plus 14 here, uh, I mean, that would, that, that would work, by the way. But you can also write it like this. 4 times Amanda's score plus uh, 14 more, like this. Either one of these will work. Uh, unless it wants it in specific order, in which case it will specify, okay? But either one of these will work as the expression. Later on, as an equation, of course, we'll just make this equal to K for Koji, but uh, this one works.